All right, so I was pretty excited to get out of deer camp, mainly because I couldn't shoot a deer, but also I was so excited about this. So I'm here with Alfred Felker from Strategic Self Reliance and Naomi Cook Johnson, country music artist and just Hello. absolute bad. This is the Wilderness Survival Course Part One, um, and it's learning how to essentially, if you're like stuck out in the woods for a night, is yep. that right? Yeah, basic Whenever. basic skills: uh, fire making, shelter building, improvising from the landscape. Uh, resource identification, water treatment. Uh, we'll talk about diet and nutrition as well for extended situations, but uh, just a good basic skill set. Well, we're here to learn from you, so we're just following along okay. and learning as we go. Sounds good. All right, let's kick it. Let's do it. So, fire needs three things to operate, right? What are those three? Do you guys know? Oxygen. Fuel. Yep, there's one. Fuel. Fuel. And heat? Heat, right, the triangle of fire. So if you remove any one of those. The ring of fire. It's no go. After okay. us both uh, sharing our birth stories, we know that like it's probably going to be impossible to have us die in the woods. Can't kill us. You cannot. There is nothing more hectic that you can go through other than having a child. So being yeah. out here is nothing. No, we both lit literally <laughs> stared death. I have felt death's hot breath on my face. Yeah. This is nothing. We don't die here, yeah. do we? No. no. So our bird's nest has come together, and the next step is going to be uh, learning how to turn this into a fire. Like a but doesn't nest. this look beautiful? It's so go. cute. It's a cute little bird's nest. A highly flammable little flammable bird nest ball here. here. I love it. We've got um, cedar bark that I we've have, like I have. I took, I took turned into fibers. We broke it all up. Yeah. And then this is the inside of the... Okay. Cedar. This is yep. cedar still, right? Yep. This is flammable. All this Maybe. is flammable. So now we're going to put all these pieces together. Five step process, essentially. Fire will tell you what it wants. If it's a lot of smoke, it's going to need some air. All right. okay. so the general rule is you never blow an open flame. You nurse it to health with tiny stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you have embers, obviously you're going to have to introduce a lot of air. Yes. The more pressure you put on that rod, the more spark you're going to get. <laughs> I'm determined. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, all, right, yes. All, right, all right. Easy. You can take a big chunk of this and hold it above that till it takes, and then you can set it down real easy. Yep. Keep working it. Small wood. We got to get our fuel going. Hey, baby. Yep. Right on the flame. Put that stuff on the flame. I feel like you're a dragon right now. She doesn't. She look like a dragon. She's like. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Even just learning how to make fire, this is something that I've wanted to learn how to do for so long. And the fact that we did that in a pretty impressive amount of time yes, is, is very yeah. cool. I mean, this just goes to show that anyone can really learn the skill. You just need to actually try. That was right. that was really fun. That, that was, was a skill I'd never learned cool. before. Yeah. Look at us go. We yeah. could cook like on that. There's some things we need to be aware of when we're talking about our shelters and where we're going to put this thing, right? So they call it the five W's, uh, is what you'll hear out there maybe. We need access to wood, firewood, water. Mm -hmm. We need to be paying attention to the wind direction and the predominant winds in the wintertime, whether it's a north or westerly wind, depending on where you're at in the country. Um, good stuff, good right? Trees. Widowmakers. Yeah. Widowmakers. Yep. And then the bugs are the wiggly things, right? So the five W's is the easy way to remember it. So now we're building a primitive shelter to survive in for the night. You've got maybe three hours to get your shelter built, get water and get a fire going. Mary and I um, are working together really well so far. I feel like we would be a dangerous team to go against. I just can't stand how messy this is. Gotta get every single leaf. You know you can have 13 cups of coffee with no side effects at all. So what we did was to finish up our shelter, we've been shoving uh, leaves in between all the cracks, trying to get it looking. I guess like every time I look in here, I kind of want to not see any light shining through. What Alfred was saying is like, if this really was a dire situation and especially if we knew there was bad weather coming in, we'd just keep working on this. We'd want to pile it about like that up high. And up and up and we'd close that front. Got to go in the front door and then move to your bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is pretty it's toasty. Yeah. Get a little deck of cards. Totally. Mm -hmm. A little swig of whiskey. <laughs> you could totally do this little, little teepee life. The two woman cussed in mama cave. Yeah, this wouldn't be this wouldn't be like a night in here. Nah, I'd do a month in this. I'm gonna 
gonna come in here at about a 30 degree angle, drive the blade in just slightly and lift up, pull our knife out. And we've got a stick that's wedged. If springtime, if it was springtime, this will be flowing. We jam our stick into the hole we've created. The water runs down into the bottle. It's good to go as is. You do not have to boil it. You do not have to filter it. It's completely safe. If I have faster flowing water, I want to back fill this. I want to, I want to let the water go past it and come back into it. Okay. As opposed to this way and all that sand and sediment. Okay. Depends on what water source you want. And I will also want to take some kind of cloth and pre-filter to keep okay. the junk out of there. So I would come in here, backfill it. Backfill it. About that much in there. So, worst case scenario, man, you just get the water right. All right, now from here, we have a stainless steel container. Obviously, you guys can see it's been burned. We're gonna boil it in this. Make a fire, boil it. By the time everything hits 212 degrees in a rolling bowl, everything's dead. Biological stuff, right? It's, you're not gonna get chemicals out of there, and heavy metals and things like that. That's in the fire. Let me get my water out. Just make a little toggle. Everything's just a twig and a string away. So the stuff that makes us sick out here are gonna be viruses, Protozoa, Giardi, all that good stuff, right? Most of that stuff is around 0 0.4, 0 0.5 micron. Viruses are very small. 0.1, some of them down to 0 0.004, right? If we look on this filter, it says 0 0.1 micron absolute hollow fiber membrane. So there is no pore in this larger than 0 0.1 micron. This is about 20 bucks. It's rated for 100,000 gallons. Am I going to trust that for 100,000 gallons? Mm -hmm. Negative. Not at 20 bucks. No. Mm -hmm. Let's go get another thing. All right, yeah, I got about, about halfway. Okay, so you screw that dude on there. Okay. All right, you turn it over. Start squeezing the bag. Yeah. Okay, so don't drink out of that filter. That's okay. a training filter. Yeah, it's, it's he's like, it life. definitely doesn't work anymore, so don't drink out <laughs> of it. Yeah. Like, all right, so passion flower's got some really great uses, but around here, this is what it looks like, and it grows as a vine. You're going to look for this in sunny places. Um, it, was gonna, it would be like, if we were looking for it around here, we would look on the edge of the woods. So once you get into the woods, there's not enough sun, okay. and it's not gonna grow there. Yeah. And it's very easy to identify because of the leaves. They it's are. Girliness. They have, it's trilobed. And when I'm explaining this to children, I like to tell them you can remember what it looks like because it kind of looks like a little chicken foot. Yeah. Or yeah. like a T Rex foot. It also has some very unique flowers. So if you're looking for this in the spring or the summertime, you are going to be looking for some beautiful. Oh, wow. They are. I've never seen them. Exotic yeah. purple flowers. Gorgeous. Yes. Yeah. Gorgeous. So this is the passion flower. So the flowers are in spring. Uh -huh. Spring and, and summer, summer. You'll, you'll be looking for those flowers. Okay. During that time, there won't be any fruit yet, but you can forage the leaves and you're going to dry off those leaves and then use that to make the tea that we're about to try. That's really cool. Yeah. And so the herbal tea is actually really good for sleep. So you can drink you like a nice cup of it, like right before bed, relax, mm. helps with it insomnia, anxiety, it can help with even ADHD, just calming that mind. So this is the fruit. Oh wow. Borderline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me smell. I didn't realize they'd be white. Ooh, it smells good. That smells one's good. good. Oh. Right? That one's good. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. so yes. this one. Yes. See, I would. I would mm -hmm. go for that this. Looks like, yes. That's a, that's a that's smells, fruit. Yes. Yeah, that one looks a little Okay, dull. yeah. So notice how mm. this one is white and it's dry on the inside. That one is not yet ripe. This one is very ripe. This one's perfect. So you eat and the you seeds? eat the seeds, yeah, just crunch yeah. them up like candy. So this is the passion flower tea, and it is delicious. It's very, it, it tastes like tea. So that she's saying earthy. Um, I can definitely see myself sitting around the campfire later with some of this. So the features you want, the mirror, movable bezel. The red arrow always faces north. So it's going north now. So if I wanted to face north, I simply turn my body until red. Runs up in the red. Facing. Now I'm facing north. If I want to go east, I dial my east 
Oh. Up to this index line. Yeah. Turn my body to right. reds into red. Gotcha. So if I wanted to send you somewhere and I said, I need you to travel on 175 degree asthma, I'm gonna dial that in. 140, 160, 170, 24 and a half. And I will spin my body until the red arrow is in the red. And from there, I lean this back where I can see the face of the compass in this mirror. I line it up, put my red in the red on my chosen azimuth, pick me a target in the distance and travel to that. And then repeat that process. All right, now you're gonna hold this on the tree with this level and then spin that bezel ring until red is in the red. The mistake here, you're wrong straight out of the game. Yep, dead center. So that's on your tree, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Red is tree. in the red here? Yes. Okay, then you can read it up top and that'll give you your asthma. 40, it's like 44. Wait, no. Oh, oh yeah, sorry, 48. yeah. 48. yeah 48. Okay, okay, yeah. So okay. Yeah, 60, so yeah. 48 yeah, yeah. degrees. Yeah. Now okay. shoot one on this gray. I got about a utility pole right here. And the more you lean that top back, the more overhead view you're gonna have, which will make you more accurate. And if you'll get it up and away from your body, yep. The goal is to be able to bounce your eyeball from this mirror to okay. this gun sight. Right. Yep, so. Yep, that looks right to me. All right, so what you got up there? You can just open it up now. You yep, so 120, 30, 12, 132. Okay. All right, and we are back day two here, and today Alfred is gonna teach us some mappings. We're gonna start by looking at uh, topographic maps. We're talking about scales of the grid system, coordinate system, how to plot routes, things like that. So, first thing we've got to do is learn how to orient this map to the terrain, right? The map is no good if it's not facing the right way. So we want we want red to red here. Yep. And so I'm just going to turn this map. All right. And then we're going to have a scale. You guys can see that says one to ten thousand on here. That means one of something on the map is ten thousand of something in the field. So it could okay. be one, okay. one inch okay. is 10,000 inches, one foot is 10,000 feet, yeah. Yeah, okay. it's just a scale. All right. So the one to 10,000 is really close. It brings a lot of detail up, right? We see all these little squiggly lines, right? Those are contour lines that indicate elevation mm -hmm. and the change in elevation. Mm -hmm. So you notice here how they're really close together mm -hmm. and in here they're really far apart. Yep. If they're really close together that indicates steepness of terrain. If they're really far apart, it's a gradual incline or decline. So we see these darker ones, right? Mm -hmm. These are our prominent elevation. So right here we have a 500 line and then we have a 600. So how many lines can you count right there between the five and the six? One, two, three, four. Okay, so five would be put you on the six, right? So that shows or tells me that this map has, every line is a 20 foot change in elevation. It's good stuff right there. Well, guys, um, thank you for joining in on this episode today. Make sure you check out Strategic Self-Reliance here with Alfred. We've had a great two days here with him, and this is just the beginning. We'll definitely be, be back, but highly recommend it. Definitely going to go home and take all of these skills yeah. and now keep practicing them. I'm going to go get myself a striker and watch this space because I'm going to try and time being able to make fires down to like 10 seconds. Because it is a lot of fun, too. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't like, you know, sitting down at a desk and doing math. Like, we had a lot of fun yeah. learning this stuff. Yeah, this was a blast. Thank you so much. You're Alfred. quite welcome. I'm glad you ladies came. Yeah, yeah. great teacher. Yeah. Thanks, Thank guys. you very much.